that we have a really good spot to create a buck cruising corridor through here. And I wanted to talk about, you know, how we're going to do that because it really matches the habitat that's here. And that's the thing, there's no certain way to create a corridor, certain way to create a bedding area. Um, it really does depend on the habitat. And so what we're trying to do is take concepts that, uh, that are important that you can match everywhere and understanding why deer move, why a buck would move in a certain area, why you're trying to complete those connections. And then you're taking that concept of bedding to bedding, travel, food to bedding, whatever it might be, and then uh, matching it to the lay of the land so that you can say, okay, this is why they should move here and this is how we're going to do it. And this is how we can make the habitat better all around in that location for all wildlife, not just, not just deer too. So that's an area where it takes a little bit of thought. We've had a stand here right up there. Now I've sat in the stand, I would say around five or six times. It's one of the first stands we put up on the property. We've had some things change with ownerships in the area a little bit uh, to where we could have a little bit more pressure here, but not really bad hunting pressure, but you know, some pressure that can make some noise. And we wanna make sure that we account for that in anything we do out here. And I'm looking at like, anytime you have pressure this is already, we have some cuttings over there. This is already a little bit of a bedding point right here. And anytime you have pressure, the worst thing we do is put a food plot here. Water holes are okay. Like we have one behind us. If it's a very defined movement back and forth and uh, we're not using a water hole to put deer on our neighbors. That's, what you, that's why you don't want a food plot on your border typically. So in this case, we're going to, we've had some decent pictures through here, some decent videos. I've even had some enjoyable hunts here but I don't find that it's a stand in a location that I really say, man, I can't wait to go hunt there like I did three years ago. So it's a little bit different. Things have changed. Like I said, our switchgrass is growing up out there. Uh, food sources that we've defined and created at other locations. Uh, water hole that used to be down here that we took out, uh, deer utilize that area differently. They actually use it more because the water hole is gone in that particular location. So. What we're deciding this year is to move this water hole and we're going to move it about 100 yards that way. We have a really nice oak for doing so, uh, maybe about 125 yards. And then this area, because of all the aspen we have here, we're going to turn this into a bedding area. So we'll get great regeneration. We're putting a bedding area on a neighbor's border that we don't have to walk through, which is perfect because then if they come up more of an open hillside access that they have to, they'll just push deer. If they're in here, they'll push them out onto our property. And uh, at the same time, it's a protected bedding area. We're already, we're already close to 100 yards from the border as it is right here. So this is something we're really uh, hurting or uh, putting deer right on our border. It's, we're gonna extend this bedding area so it's 100, 100 to 125 yards from the border. Sorry to interrupt, but we have a lot going on with this food plot and many more. I can't wait to plant this. Check out what we're planting on WHS Wildlife Blends. All 12 of our blends are out. You can order bulk seed, buckwheat, and rye. Check it out. We have a new website. Click on seed on the whitehabitatsolutions.com. It'll take you right to the, the new blend site. Appreciate you for checking it out and taking the time to watch us. The reason we were going to make a corridor here is there's a very steep point. It all comes together here. Open habitat down here. Deer go through here a lot. You can see up to the field edge. It's called inside corner. It's an L like this. Woods is where my hand's at right here. So the deer cruise along that inside corner. It almost makes an X of movement right here. Now I like to have a stand location in that X of movement sometimes, and we still might be able to do that. There's a cherry tree back here that we can utilize right on the edge if we want to. We can still watch this X of movement from the outside blower sent into the switchgrass. Deer don't bed in the switchgrass typically. That's why we can do that. But I want to really accentuate this movement. So we have a lot of benches over here. The closer we're getting to this end, it's more open. It's open out there, but we do have about an acre and a half to two acres of switchgrass. So this makes it very secure back here. We want to connect this trail system right here. We don't want to go in directly towards the neighbors like some of the trails are right now. We want to push deer right down here where Dylan and I scouted a new stand location. Uh, what was that, a month ago, Dylan? Somewhere around there? Yep, uh, Valentine's Day. Oh yeah, we actually had uh, a lot more snow <laughs> right then on the ground right now. We just Our snow is just opening up on this side of the ridge. It's been open on this side of the ridge. So um, you know, a lot has changed over the last month 
a month and a half. If you look through here, I want to create a travel quarter. I want to, I want to define this movement a little bit better. If you can see the timber up here, a lot of this popple right here, or aspen, they're all leaning towards the field edge. They're trying to get that sunlight. Come back here in this dividing line though, and you start to see a lot of the popple up here are leaning towards the right, which is the hollow and the ridge and the ridge point. So we have a lot of trees leaning this way and then a lot of trees leaning this way. We also have had a lot of movement through here. It goes right under the stand location. So I'm gonna to choose to keep about a 10, 15 yard gap through here. And then we're gonna lay a whole bunch of timber that way. And we're gonna lay a bunch of timber this way so that we can specifically teach deer to when they come through here, instead of going up there and getting pinched towards an open area, or going up that way and getting pinched towards an open area, we give them a really nice wide gap here that'll be surrounded by aspen regeneration. This trail will match right down to a bench that when we extend it on this field edge going, going this direction to the west, to the northwest, then we can match up that bench that goes right over to our new water hole location. And like I've said, told a lot of people, we had, we've used 100 gallon tanks. This is a 150 gallon tank. We're starting to take those 150s out because the 300 gallon tanks last the entire hunting season. We've had drought the last couple of years during hunting season. So we filled them two to three times. This is one we fill a lot. And then we notice those 150s will last about a month, five weeks, somewhere around there. So if you're filling them in September sometime, they're gonna end up running out just at that perfect time, that sweet spot in mid-October, end of October. So we're changing out a lot of our water holes into 300 gallon tanks. We find that those last season, new 300 gallon tank will go back that way. We have a beautiful oak picked out uh, that we're gonna drive by here in a second. And it all boils down in this inside corner. They already moved through this inside corner a lot. It's a gap between cover of about 125 to 150 yards. So then we can move them right through here. We have a draw that comes up down here, very, very steep pinch point to where the deer want to funnel on this top movement anyways, side to side movement between a neighboring bedding area over there. And so it sets up that stand location there, sets up the stand location here, and really don't have to get into this and it adds a great bedding area, great aspen regeneration. This will be full of grouse in this location. You can put some rabbits back here turkey nesting as it gets close to the switchgrass and the hardwood regeneration and briars. And then we'll continue that movement down here. So continuing the movement is just making sure that we match deer trails, which we do have deer trails that go right in front of that stand location. This will throw those deer right at those trails that go in front of the other stand location. And then we'll wrap this around on this downhill side. I can knock some timber this way, almost like a big berm. We'll push those deer around down to the bench and that'll lead right over to the water hole. So we're using a water hole, pinch point at the top of the draw, big timber cut this way, big timber cut this way to serve as part of this berm, just to move them around this outside corner. And that's where we're making a deer travel corridor in this location. It doesn't even mean that we go in here and cut the timber. We'll use an outside corner of some cutting timber in this corner. And then on that side, we'll cut some timber on the high side and low side. But bottom line is, we're cutting a lot of timber in this location, not so much in the others, because there's already natural movement in those locations. Now, if this was all tag alder here and it was a swamp, we could uh, actually take a DR brush trimmer, or even a six foot brush hog in a tractor, if it's dry during July, August, we can mow that down and create a trail that comes through here. If we are trying to create a movement through switchgrass, while it's going through that thick area of switchgrass, we can mow, create that trail, and that really sends a deer whichever way we want them to go. Once they go through this thick area of constraint, the thick area of constraint are these big aspen that are on either side. So we have that thick area. Once we turn these deer through here, I hope it makes sense when you have that thick area, we're sending them in either location. So whether that thick area was red cedar, tag alder, switchgrass, young conifer, whatever it might brush, autumn olive, whatever thicket that you're trying to steer deer through, very easy to steer them through the direction you want to through the thick area, which we're going to create here, and then let them go to neighboring pinch points, cruising areas and deer trails as it is already naturally established. So we're doing that in this location. 
We'll start cutting these, this timber. We'll follow up with that later and show you how it all fits together. But we're gonna take one stain location right here, turn this more of into a cruising area slash bedding area. We'll put another stand down there and another stand over there. So we're basically taking a small area like this, getting two stands out of it, along with a bedding area instead of one stand without that bedding area. And so that's one way that we're improving this. And of course, different wind options. Morning winds that way, morning winds that way or that way on that side, evening winds there. So we have evening winds this way. So really the opposite almost of everything with just those two stand locations. And that's how I prefer to set up small properties where you're not just putting one stand. Now when we came in here, we were putting out a minimum number of stands that we could for that first year just to get things going because we had so much to do. But now we're starting to fine tune it. And that's when we look at a client property, we look at as if they're looking two to three years down the road where these are stands you might put in right here, but eventually you're adding these stands or moving things. And, uh, and that's what we're really looking at now. We're getting into that point where we can really start to micromanage some of these areas and get the most efficiency out of our locations and making a buck cruising corridor right here through the timber the way it is right now. And again, I'll leave about a 10 yard gap, maybe 20 yard gap so the deer feel natural. They're not confined into big cuttings on either side. If you try to ram them through a six foot, eight foot wide and narrow passageway, they don't like it, especially when they have a lot of cover. I might fly for Northern Ohio, Southern Michigan, Southern Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, we don't have a lot of cover. Northern Indiana, but in a location like this where it's 50-50 and they want to have a little bit of space and we're going to give it to them right in this location. And Dylan, I think this matched up with that nice rub that was down the hill right here. It's, it's in there. So Dylan took a beautiful picture of a rub uh, two years back, I think it would have been. Yep. It actually made a print out of it, but that kind of lines up with everything we're trying to do right here. There's also a scrape back there, natural scrape. So we think it's going to pay off really big this fall. And really it starts with cutting these confining areas down, pointing the deer in the right direction, adding the water hole on that side, pinch point over here. And that's how we'll put it all together out here and uh, use this travel corridor to our advantage based on the habitat that's being given to us at this moment. Now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitehabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, our web class, and certainly, our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site for the seed company. We have all 12 blends available. So check it all out though. I encourage you, I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.